The big saltwater ecosphere, or secosphere as some of you know it, recently turned two years old. That calls for a celebration in the form of an update. First I'll give a quick recap of what happened in the first year of its life. But I do highly recommend to go and watch, if you haven't already, the one year update on this closed ecosystem, because I go into much further detail there. So two years ago I went to the beach and collected water, sand and a bunch of seaweed, which I put in an airtight jar and closed on the 2nd of August 2018. It turned out I had caught a crab larva and a bunch of other animals. After a month the crab wasn't a larva anymore and I noticed countless crustaceans living throughout the jar, including on the glass. Some macroalgae were growing, while others were decaying. After two months we saw a spionid worm for the first time. After five months the crab died. After a year it looked like this. Almost all of the initial seaweed had died, but new algae and macroalgae were growing as well. The on the glass community had grown as well, and spionid worms were still present. That was a year ago. This is what it looks like today, two years after it was made. The macroalgae that was initially added has been decaying even more, slowly but steadily, the combined work of microbes and crustaceans. There has also been a lot of new algae growth, on the glass but especially on top of the sand. A big green carpet of algae has formed, providing oxygen, food and filtration for all the animals living inside. The main focus of this update will be on all of the little crustaceans, paramecium and all other little critters roaming around in this closed ecosystem. For practical reasons, most of the footage is from the on the glass community, but as far as I know, that is an accurate representation of the fauna living inside the ecosphere. I filmed through the good old trusty stereo microscope and I finally figured out how to do that without the shaky shaky. Well, most of it. Instead of building a professional contraption, I made a very professional contraption. I tied the head of the stereo microscope to a hardcover book using butcher string, the red and white one. I could then adjust the height by placing DVD boxes under the book. And focus by very carefully moving the entire contraption towards or away from the jar. Hold on, I believe there's a track and we've gotten off of it. So let's talk animals. Here we see a couple of marine paramecium. I hope that by now it's obvious that all organisms living here are marine organisms or organisms that can live in salt water. They're moving around in a patch of newly grown algae. If you look a little more closely, you can see a lot of smaller microbes moving around. It's going to be near impossible to determine exactly what they are without going to a higher magnification. For a higher magnification, I would need to use a compound microscope. However, the glass of the jar is thicker than the focal length of the required lens. So, uh, besides the paramecium, in this shot you can see a very tiny animal. At first I thought, well, that looks like a tiny crab. But I don't think crabs come in this small of a size. So it might very well be another type of crustacean. Although I think it's very unlikely, it just might be a marine mite, because those do exist. In this little algae ball, we see a paramecium like the ones we saw before, and a smaller red microbe, which looks like and moves like a paramecium. So it just might be a different kind of paramecium. In the two year update video on the spring ecosphere, I talked about how the biodiversity in that ecosystem went down. In this ecosphere, the biodiversity went down undoubtedly as well, but I wonder how significant it actually is. For us human observers, like me, it seems obvious the crab and the jiggly worm died, as well as the sea lettuce, 
so it's pretty much dead. But if you look more closely, the jar tells a different story. Sure, a few large animals and macroalgae have died, but the ecosystem is still teeming with life, albeit smaller life. There's countless of microbes, plankton and other small critters. We can see a lot of new algae growth and there's a good chance that the initial seaweeds still have living spores in the system. So, although a few of the relatively larger animals and algae have died, this ecosystem, on another level, is still biodiverse. You've seen a lot of paramecium on your screen now, so why don't we shift the focus to some little crustaceans next. The clip that follows next is a really cool crossover, which symbolizes the transition of paramecium to crustacean. Enjoy! Did you notice this little thing? Do you know what it is? Well, I think it just might be a tardigrade. Tardigrades are pretty much everywhere, from the deepest oceans to the highest mountains, even in outer space, but not by choice. Something you might have never realized is that there's not one kind of tardigrade. There's actually over 1300 known species, four of which are very commonly found on Dutch beaches. You can count the four pairs of legs if you, for some reason, felt the need to do so. I hear you thinking, hold on there Mr. Jarman, those look like Sheldon J. Plankton from Spongebob. Well, you're not wrong, because Sheldon J. Plankton is a copepod, just like these are. Plankton are organisms that can't move against the current. It looks like these copepods are very good at swimming. And if I create a current inside this jar by turning it, they can swim against that too. But if it comes to large ocean currents, they stand no chance and involuntarily move along with the current. This sets them apart from Nekton, which can actively move through the water, like fish, whales and crabs. Did you know an individual planktonic organism is called a plankter? I bet you maybe did. The crustaceans you're seeing are from an order of copepods called Harpacticoida. Most Harpacticoidae are benthic species, which basically means they live on the bottom of the ocean. It's a little more complicated, but that's the gist of it. And well, that's what we're seeing here too. The copepods mostly live in the green algae carpet I talked about earlier, and also on the glass. I also know of other free-swimming copepod species living in this very jar but they are near impossible to film. Look, this one has eggs, and it dropped one, or it was just poop. You can never know for sure. What I think is really crazy is that these copepods and the paramecium are clearly in the same order of magnitude. But the paramecium only consists of one cell, while the copepod is made up of many cells. Which neatly shows the size difference cells can have. On the one hand, you have the smallest bacterium, which is one cell and way, way too small to see at this magnification. Then you have these paramecium, which you can definitely see with the naked eye if you try hard enough. And there's frog eggs, which are clearly visible with the naked eye. Some nerve cells in your body are the length from your butt to your toes. Some seaweeds are only one cell. And there are unicellular organisms, like the bubble algae, that can fill the palm of your hand. Anyway, we're getting off track again. Here's something interesting. What we're seeing are tentacles moving around just above the sand. I'm not sure if these are the tentacles of a small spionid worm or of an entirely different animal. There's also a slight chance that these are individual worms, but I will stick to the tentacle theory for now. This is a red paramecium meeting, very suspicious. This video is tilted 90 degrees. On the right side you can see the tentacles of what I really think is a spionic worm. Here you can see the entire on the glass community together.
Well, this is the end of the two year update on the little saltwater world living on my windowsill, but not the end of the video. As some of you know, I recently started studying biology, which has been taking up way more of my time than I anticipated. Hence the lack of videos recently. I will try to put out as many videos as I can, but I can't guarantee a steady upload schedule for now. I thought I should let you know. I would like to thank KDB, Lady Mars, Nurse Maria, Ollie, and last but certainly not least, a very kind patron that went to Atascosita Middle School in Humboldt, Texas. And all of the other patrons for their very generous support. Well, that's it. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.